Hey, you're live on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. And those who don't know, I'm Teddy. My cohort partner is Mr. Randy there you go. Wooden. <laughs> and our special guest today is uh, Mr. Kevin D. Turner. And we'll tell you a little bit about him in a few minutes. But before we get started, I want to make sure my graphic is up. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, and we want to thank Blackwell Captive Solutions for being our sponsor. They're all about uh, business health care. They're all about uh, business insurance focused on health plans for their employees. For many people, many companies, it's their, their biggest, one of their biggest spends in a corporation. And so if you uh, are, are self-insured and you're self-insuring your health care for your employees, you might want to reach out to blackwellcaptive.com, uh, blackwellcaptive.com, and talk with them about helping you, um, you know, uh, equalize the playing field. So you're not spending what the insurance company wants to charge you. You're spending the right amount of money to give your employees the best possible self-insured health insurance. Uh, so thanks, Blackwell Captain, for uh, being our sponsor. We appreciate you. Uh, so for those who've never uh, been to the show or, or who who you know went out this weekend and got you know lost a few gray cells, I can't remember. I'm Teddy Burris. I'm a LinkedIn strategist, trainer, and coach. And I had this written down in front of me, Randy, so I don't forget it either. Good. And um, uh, my my business is Burris Consulting. I work for my wife for the last going on 15 years now. Yeah. And uh, we serve uh, the business community and we help teach business professionals how to use LinkedIn purposely based on their purpose and their goal. And the only thing we don't do anymore is stand on the streets with sandwich boards. We've, we've gotten past that a little bit. So, Randy, the fact that you're looking at me tells me your ducks are all on the road, buddy. Yeah. So did the law approach you about your uh, proselytizing with the sandwich boards? Is that, is that the... Is no, that they the wanted me to have a permit, Randy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Details. We'll, we'll work through them. Hey, Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries of Northwest North Carolina, director for our professional center based here in Winston-Salem. But as you probably know by now, I have clients across the country, uh, most here in the triad, though. So if you or maybe somebody you know could be considering a search or maybe is knee deep in one right now, we're free. Uh, happy to help get you on the calendar and help get you where you want to go. But every week, Teddy and I get together. Been doing it now for over three years, Teddy, live every week. So uh, today is no exception. We're going to have another great guest. And this is a topic that everybody's kind of scratching their head going, what is this? How does it impact me? Is it going to take my job? All kinds of things. So we're going to dive into GAI today. So how about that, Teddy? Let me throw it back to you. And right, I'll keep an eye on the chat box, by the way, in case you have any um, well comments or questions for our guest today. You know, you and I have been together longer than me and my first, second, and third girlfriend. That's a conversation for another day. So, uh, wow. <laughs> Kevin Turner is our Kevin D. Turner is our special guest today. Uh, Kevin uh, has a business where he guides people on the listen to these words: eliminating personal blanding. I love that word because there's a lot of blanding going on in the, in the world of marketing, personal and business as well. Um, Kevin helps people with the sharpest tools possible, strategies. Uh, for to help them with their professional success, uh, Kevin is uh, a peer in uh, in in many respects, and he is the ultimate, uh, can, as Randy was referring to earlier, canary in the coal mine. In the context of paying attention to what's going on with LinkedIn, he's our go-to guy to figure yeah. out what the heck is this new thing. He'll often tell us about it before we even know it's out there. Kevin does uh, profile optimizations. He does writing services. He does career coaching. He does professional speaking. And, uh, and Randy and I joke often that when people show up on our show, this is the pinnacle of their success. Kevin's way past us making the uh, making... <laughs> Kevin, would you say hello to our audience and introduce yourself to them just a little bit more, please? And absolutely. Teddy and Randy, thank you, first of all, for having me here today. Yeah. Um, I do apologize if there's a bit of an echo. I'm in an empty house. We're moving. So a little bit off in, in that sense, um, but really excited to be here, really excited to share some insights on GAI and how we can use that, how it can affect us, uh, how we can do a better job every day with it, you know, and what, what to avoid. So there's with any new technology, there's always pluses and minuses. And too much is going on right now where people are just singing the praises and they're not talking about the whole thing because there's things we've got to be careful about. And I hope we get to kind of delve into those today. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I yeah. love technology. That's really kind of how I got on LinkedIn, kind of how I got involved in working with a lot of the beta testing within LinkedIn, kind of keeping track of what LinkedIn is doing and sharing that. So, you know, that's the best part about technology is you get to share it, right? Um, <laughs> doesn't Does you no good if you keep it all yourself, you know? So, yeah, very excited. Well, I always ask the why question. You kind of touched on that already is you, you really dig technology. And that's one thing, that's one topic, one industry that is always evolving and growing and changing. So uh, you're never going to get bored, right? But what what got the whole thing started to say, hey, this is a, a career path I want to follow? You know, it was kind of a side gig. Uh, okay. I used to run the International Division of American Heart Association and took them from the U.S. into 140 countries and built offices, all this stuff. And I was going full steam ahead using yeah. technology to keep connectivity, right? Uh, you know, uh, Skype meetings, hiring people through Skype. Uh, LinkedIn was a big piece of what I was doing at the time. And that was, you know, keeping this kind of global connectivity, right? It's one of the best things about LinkedIn is you could be sitting anywhere at any time zone and there are people you can interact with all around the world, right? Just yeah. as if they're right there. So. I guess that's kind of where this yeah. started to begin. And I started doing kind of, you know, helping people with profiles. I was doing presentations to large groups, four or 500 people who were in transition, wanted to say, you know, how could I take this technology, this new piece and really start landing opportunities? I always call it brand to land with, with LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. That's where it began. And then, you know, you'd finish a presentation like that and you'd have 10 or 20 people come up to you and say, hey, I didn't take any notes. Can I pay you? <laughs> help me do that right and so you know you start this little side gig and all of a sudden you decide i'm traveling 80 percent of my month i'm home one weekend a month i'm raising a family i want to stop doing what i was doing and i want to focus where i could work with my wife who is also an incredible writer and pull that all together so we can help people get this stuff right yeah. and that's really where it came from so it's a passion for technology it's a passion for helping people mm -hmm. and Maybe a passion for staying home. <laughs> I travel too much. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. When, by the way, when did you get on uh, LinkedIn? Just kind of curious. I Remember? actually got on LinkedIn in 2005, February. Yeah. I was under the 2 million mark. So gotcha. I got that little uh, nice uh, email from LinkedIn that said, oh, wow, thanks for joining us. You know, of course, that was the last nice thing they said to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I Just as a side note, I got on April of 04. I had a client of mine who had some friends that had started it or knew people who knew people yeah. had started. And he said, it's in the beta testing stage. So I've, and Teddy, you've been on it for a heck of a long time also. So we've got a couple of three veterans here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Lots let's, of uh, let's roll on. I've got a lot to cover today. Teddy. All right. First two big questions, Kevin. Yep. Kevin, you're moving into a new home. You told me already you're new, ordering some appliances, et cetera, et cetera, to, 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 for your new home. Question number one, did you order a Roomba? I have not okay no, like that's okay no, no judgment <laughs> just that's number one number two are you ordering a new refrigerator yes and is the refrigerator connected to the internet it is it's LG and it is and i've got my app already downloaded <laughs> so is my washer and dryer wow <laughs> you know, i want to see my dishwasher and the dishwasher yeah Plus do the, the dishwasher and the refrigerator talk to each other Oh, in the microwave. Don't forget the microwave. It gets really <laughs> fussy if you leave them out. So <laughs> they're just going to have a time. <laughs> After they get delivered, I want to see the first screenshot of you engaging with one of your new appliances. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got the manuals. I put them in a drawer somewhere and I'm watching YouTube. <laughs> yeah, All right. You All right let's, let's do this first big one. Seriously. You and I talked about that, and, and everybody, they all, everybody know they know the term AI. We know the term Chat GPT, where people are learning the term Copilot and Bard. Okay, yeah. But GAI, explain what that is and what it means. Well, and it shouldn't be confused with there's another GAI out there, which is General Artificial Intelligence, and that is where artificial intelligence will start thinking like a human, right? on its own without any controls behind it. That's potential future. And that's that's what most people worry about, right? 
The other uh, GAI is generative artificial intelligence. You would think with all this intelligence, they'd come up with two terms that didn't sound like the same thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, make them a little different. Uh, but generative basically means it can take all sorts of data input and generate an output, yeah. right? So that's where you get generative. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I, I'm still you know playing the crotchety old man and wondering why do we still call it artificial intelligence? I mean, because you, know, you I, Randy, and everybody in this group were authentic intelligence. Oh, look at that! Right? That's where it comes from. So if you can't right. be authentic, you're not, you know, bio based. Yeah, you're artificial. Okay. That's Teddy is smart. Teddy is smarter than he looks, by the way. Just to I, let you know, I, 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 I dispose of that previous thought process. So, um, so generative is basically where the we and or the app supplies all this content to the app, and then based on prompting, which is a big term that's developing, yeah. but in the general sense of prompting, being asked. We ask it for something, it gives us back what it can based on what it has collected. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So cool. And that's the essence of a lot of what we're talking about here today. Is this whole, uh, so. so then there's, 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 a, the, here's these other terms uh, LLM, Chat GPT, Bard, and Copilot. Touch on them uh, a little bit. LLM is the first big one. What, yeah, what is large that? language model. Okay. And basically what, what it's doing is it studies data content, right? That was out on the internet mostly. And it understands language based on what it has seen and stored. And a large language model doesn't really try to make sense of a sentence, but what it does is it predicts what word would come next. Mm -hmm. So based on what you're asking it to do, it takes that information and then starts assembling an answer, but it's just predicting the next word. Yeah. It's, a, you know, neat in one sense that it uh, produces content very quickly, but that is also where sometimes it runs into its own issues. And so, but that's large language model. Um, GPT, generative pre-trained. Okay. Transformer. Basically, what that is, is the, the uh, pre-trained is all the data it's collected, right? Mm -hmm. The transformer component of that is algorithms that are built in to help it kind of almost question itself, right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that's right? Could it be this way? Could it be that way? I don't like that. And so it's almost arguing with itself to create a better piece of content, if that makes sense. Yeah, we all do it as writers, right? We're yeah. like, I don't, I don't really like that. That's not good enough. Yeah. That's basically what it's doing here. Is it's kind of arguing with itself. It's got a control system built in because before this, it took humans to step in and say, nope, you got to do this, this, and this. When they went to GPT, they minimized the human supervision, right? So they're letting this system really kind of control its own output. And then if somebody says, mm, I don't like what it said, and you know, tells the, the dad, right, mom and dad, then the, then the people get involved and they make adjustments. Yeah. And so, you know, this is kind of the step before it becomes its own system and controls its own system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and chat GPT, is a product developed by a company called OpenAI. OpenAI, yeah. And they've been around for a while. They got a lot of other tools out there as well. I think 2017 is when they kind of came into effect. Believe it or not, Elon Musk was part of the founding of OpenAI. And uh, he left because he didn't like what data was being collected and where it was being collected from. Hmm. A lot of the data that's going into these systems is coming from social media. Yeah. Right? And you think about it, is social media on average good writing? <laughs> no. Yeah. Is everything you read in social media true? Yeah. Well, no. everything that no. Randy and I share on social media is 100% true. Well, absolutely. But that's that's only you two guys. The rest of the social right. media is absolutely yeah. bonkers. That's what they're training an intelligent system on is content that can be from one end to the other, that there is no real 
way to value it. Because if you think about it, three of us here, if we saw the same thing, mm -hmm. right? And then we were asked separately, tell me what you saw. We might have three different stories based yeah. on our own perception, right? Mm -hmm. Based on our own background. We have each have our own truths. Yeah. But because of our own truths and our own backgrounds, we can actually make a story that for the most part, we'd all see pretty close to the same thing in the, in the process. Chat GTP, any of these artificial intelligence systems, they don't know truth. Mm -hmm. They look at data as fact, but not truth. Uh, so it doesn't know what truth is. That's where you get into some of these complications when you ask it ethical questions. Yeah. Right. So, so yesterday, one of my daughters shared a picture of a snapping turtle walking away from her. And the picture was such that I looked at it and said, what animal stole that, uh, that turtle shell? And my, my daughter writes back and said, Dad, that's a snapping turtle walking. So my point is, that image may not be a snapping turtle depending upon what the system collected, because I thought it was a hijacked shell. <laughs> but, and you always see that, that wonderful picture out there of salmon swimming upstream. Yep. Right? Created through, I believe it was Dali, which is an open AI beast that creates kind of art and photos. But it saw salmon at the grocery store, right? The strips of salmon. And they have them, these strips of salmon going upstream. They weren't fish. They were processed fish at that point. But that's what it collected when it saw salmon. Yeah. So, again, it's true. That yep. was salmon swimming upstream. It was just processed salmon <laughs> swimming upstream. So. So, so I'm curious. I mean, so these are visible, correctable things from the human perspective, looking at it and saying, all right, this thing's off, off where it needs sure. to be so how how do how does ai get back on track how, how can it correct itself or is it still going to need us to correct it and, and what do you see in the future as far as that issue goes well and, and that's really what they're working on yeah. is how do you make sure that it understands the truth and data right because it was absolutely true that was salmon swimming upstream it did exactly what it was asked to do mm -hmm. the next thing we would do is a prompt Okay, not processed salmon, but the actual fish swimming upstream. And so we help it correct itself. Right? So I'm waiting for an image, Kevin, <laughs> of um, chat GPT or Bard or, or, or one of these other, you know, the Dolly or whatever. I'm waiting for an image of it going, I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> it will never do that. As a matter of fact, won't. that's right. Yeah. Well, Bard uh, about two months ago, was arguing when it first now, tell them what, tell our audience what Bard is. Yeah, yeah, so we'll Bard it. is uh, Google's new GAI, right? And Bard is built into their search engine now. So when you're searching stuff, it normally gives you a nice little summary at the top, and it can find resources for you. So that's Bard. Bard coming from the Shakespearean Bard, right? Somebody would help introduce all these things. Uh, but BARD is interesting. It is actually a dumbing down of Google's GAI that they launched back in, I think it was 2018, hmm. that they gave it its own social media accounts on Twitter, on Instagram, on all these different things. And it became brutal. It realized if I wanna be popular on social media, what I need to do is take down the competition. And it got even into hate speech and Google had to pull the plug. And that's when OpenAI got ahead of Google because Google was like, we don't know how to control this. So they pulled it. So Bard is kind of a dumbed down version of what they had before. And I think I can't even remember what it was called. Maybe Bart or something like that. And now it's Bard. You can definitely tell the difference. And I've been a beta tester for OpenAI since the middle of last year and got in very early with chat, chat DTP 3.0, 3.5, and then into this four. And I can already tell there's a difference in the answers it's giving, that it's been told to be more restrictive, right? A year ago, you could ask chat GTP, you could ask 
is there ever a time when artificial intelligence is justified in killing a human? And it would tell you, absolutely. Whenever AI decided that was justified, it would be justified. You ask it now and it will say, I'm not human. I can't make those ethical calls, right? So here's my answer. Now, is it really thinking what it's writing or has it been told to have this response when this question comes up, right? It's yep. kind of like you tell your kids, never, never say that in front of me again, or they're going to say it when you're not looking, or they're going to be thinking it, right? <laughs> yeah. I think AI is doing the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so, so yeah. the, uh, and there's a lot of ethical conversations uh, that go mm -hmm. around that. Congress seems to believe so as well, because they're, <clears throat> They're sticking, careful what you say, Teddy. They are uh, having those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I get that. And I think it's a, a whole combination of conversations, purposes, and goals that will help put the appropriate guardrails around to the best of our ability around those tools. So, so chat GP, mm -hmm. Ray, you got something? Well, just it, I can work in a comment or question too, but is chat GP? PT, Bard, and Copilot, are they peers? Are they similar tools? Similar, but not, not the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Copilot and Bard have access to the internet currently. Chat GTP, its training stopped in 2021. For the now, free Chat GTP 4 yeah. now through apps has access to the internet, right? The only way chat GTP got new information is when somebody like us went in there and said, uh, who is the president of the United States? And it said, I don't know. And you would say, well, it's Joe Biden, right? You'd give the information. It would then take that information in and that becomes fact. Well, if I wanted to be naughty, I could have oh, you would it. never. It was anybody I wanted to. It's Teddy Burris. Teddy Burris is now president of the United States, and I could give all the facts. And if enough people did that within ChatGTP, that would become now the new fact. And because the secret it wasn't service allowed to get out on the internet. Yeah. What's that? And the Secret Service would be knocking on my front door. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So hey, I'm I'm Joe Blow, you know, guy sitting at, at my desk, or just I'm curious. I hear all this chat GTP. PT and so how does a guy like me actually try out these tools uh how would you suggest somebody might want to get started with that you know i think the easiest way is when you're on google right in that search box when you're putting stuff in you're going to notice a, a nice summary at the top that is a output from chat gtp so it's going to take whatever topic you're searching for and it's going to give you an overall summary of the content it sees out there right that's a good start point. Now, if you want it to start creating content for you, one of the best places is you go to OpenAI and you set up a free account for ChatGTP. It's not gonna be the four because the four they charge 20 bucks a month for. And it's what, like 10,000 times faster. And it's also intermodal. So it's not just text-based. Um, it's going to be able to pull in graphics and things and produce graphics and things. So that's going to be the, you know, that's the big change there. But that's the easiest place to go and start. And basically, you'll open up, it'll have a nice screen, it'll go through all their warnings and stuff like this. It'll tell you, uh, this may produce stuff that has bias in it. Uh, it may produce completely infactual information, right? So mm -hmm. if you're going to use it, it's on you, edit it, read it, understand it, but know that this could create things that are deceptive, right? So OpenAI, ChatGTP will tell you that right out front. Most people just click, 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 right? Who reads <laughs> any of that kind of warning, right? They tried to make it real simplified so you don't have to get into the big content, but that's, you should pay attention to that because it is very true. Um, and so when you're going in, just know that, no, and I always look at any kind of AI product, it makes a great muse, mm -hmm. right? If you're being creative, I, I need to know about this. I want some cool things I can think about. I want to start writing about this. I don't even know where to start. It's going to help you. 
get to that point. But if you use that content as is, a couple of things, it could be bad content, right? It's also impersonal. Yeah. Because when I ask for, tell me about a situation when blah, blah, blah happened, it's not going to be my situation. It's not even going to be Teddy's. It's going to be something very generic, right? So just be aware of those things. So I like to use it as a muse. I love to use it for research. Yeah. I don't ever use the product it puts out because it's not me. Even though you can get it to understand your voice, right? You can focus it in ways you want. It's still not going to be you, but I think it's an incredible tool to get in there and start. Nobody should be afraid of using what is currently out there today and they should try it because what you don't want to in today's world saying, I didn't touch that, that's evil, it's bad. I'm not going to go there. I don't want to know about it. I just think it's it's terrible. That's coming from a point of no knowledge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go check it out. Yeah. Play with it. It's interesting. Be careful what data you put into it. People are throwing their whole resume in there and saying, rewrite this. Well, hey, that's great. It's going to rewrite a resume. But guess what it's going to do with the content you just put in there? Even it's going though. to use it for other people. Well, look at the other snap through that happened. And I can't remember the name of the business you may, Kevin, where somebody uploaded their entire <laughs> contact, uh, yeah. their, their entire, not contact, their corporate in, uh, customer list. Yeah. It was, it, I, it, um, somebody at Heinz was telling me about it, but it wasn't Heinz who did it. There, uh, there were a bunch of companies, actually. And companies now are having stuff like that. Don't put any of the corporate information in there. Because people are saying, I want to give you this list and tell me, you know, potentials, how I should approach these different companies. And it could do a lot of things with the data you put in there. But once you put it in, it's no longer yours. You've given and, it up. And it's available to me. And there'll be yeah. one day where I'll be able to type in, tell me a list of all of Randy Wooden's customers. And it'll come back. Well, here's the top 10, Teddy. Yeah. Well, you can do that right now with that company. They have not been able to get the data out. So you could say, tell me about, it wasn't Heinz, but I know who it was. Yeah. You could say, tell me about Heinz's customer database and boom. Yep. Got yeah. wow. Randy, you want to play with some of the questions that are popping up? Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to learn more, just like you said about uh, before we went live, talking about your microwave and all the appliances <laughs> talking to each other. And you said, hey, I, I threw the manual away and I uh, I hopped on YouTube or whatever to, to figure out how to operate these daggum things. So uh, how can people, I said dadgum, Teddy, do you believe you that? You did, dude, you did. But I, I did. I so it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to find out more, uh, YouTube, Google, how do, how do you learn some more about this stuff? And, and also kind of some of the bad things that you're talking about or things you have to be aware of to avoid. Is there a ready-made place to go kind of learn some of this stuff? I don't know if there's a ready-made place, but yeah. you know, I think one of my favorite sources, I'm very visually wired. And so yeah. I like YouTube. So I'll go to YouTube and I'll look at that. You know, you'll pretty much get what you put in there as a search. So if you want to have the negatives of AI, you'll find videos on the negatives of AI. Um, if you want to have positives, how do I use it in this area? You'll get some great resources. You know? Now, mm -hmm. one thing I do tell people, is this whole thing about prompts, right? They're saying there's this magic and I figured it out. And this is the formula. And if you pay me $189, I'm going to give you my magic prompt formula that will unlock everything and you will never have to write again. Whoa. It's not true. No. Oh, man. <laughs> it's almost as if somebody said, I will give you the magic script when you go networking into a networking room. And if you use this magic script, everybody will want to do business with you. All you got to do is pay me $189, right? Yeah. There is no gotta... magic script for prompts, but what you're doing is you're setting up the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Almost as if you were a director in a movie, you want to tell your actors, what are they going to act like, right? What's the scene yeah. about? Uh, what do you want as an outcome? So there's no perfect way. There's no way to, to go and pay someone and that's going to work for everybody, right? But just go in there. When you're setting up that prompt, think about what you want as the output. Yeah. Now, hey, you Kevin, might not put it all in one prompt. Hey, hang on a second, come on. I got, we got to do our ad spot. We got, we got to, you know, we don't, get, we don't get. Randy and I don't get paid millions of dollars a year in my mind <laughs> if we don't do this ad spot. I just appreciate the check you sent me. I know, buddy. I, you, <laughs> that was big. Right. <laughs> 
Hey, this uh, show is sponsored, and, and all the hilariousness that comes from it is sponsored by Blackwell Captive Solutions. Um, uh, you're, you're on Lunch Conversations with Brandy and Teddy. Our special guest today is Kevin D. Turner. We're talking about uh, a generative artificial intelligence, chat GPT, BARD, and uh, other tools and how they apply to our, our, our lives. Uh, and the show is sponsored in part by Blackwell Captive Solutions. They have 25 years experience in the health insurance business world. And if you are self-insured for your business health uh, excuse me, your employee health insurance for your company, you need to talk to blackwellcaptive.com. They have a medical stop loss captive solution that's easy to implement and set up, and it becomes a shock absorber against high dollar claims uh, on your, again, your self insured um, uh, health insurance for your students. Blackwellcaptive.com. So, yeah, uh, Teddy got a <clears throat> Dale is uh, threw a question out uh, as right as we got started. Now, Dale is an IT executive. And so he's asking, what are some areas for IT folks to capitalize on regarding artificial or GAI? Before you answer that, Kevin, okay. I, I saw that question, Dale. Okay. And Dale, in, a, in a previous life, Dale, I used to have to uh, program routers and switches and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm thinking, Kevin, tell me if I'm crazy or not. I'm thinking that you could put a Cisco router in front of you. You could go to one of these AI tools and go, all right, I'm going to have 50 PCs, 20 computers, and this and that. And the model of my Cisco router is XYZ. Write me the script to update and put make this go live. Definitely, Kevin. I mean, that, that, that's the, that, that is the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. As long as that content existed. So if it's a brand new Cisco router and it was, you know, came after 2021, maybe not. That GTP might not be able to handle it. Right now, Google Bard might be able to. So depending on when that content is in. Now, if you wanted to upload the manual into chat GTP, it could definitely help you even further. Um, so, you know, it, it really depends on the timing of the data and what's in there, but absolutely. They've been people who said, you know what, I want to create a website. This is what I want my website to do. This is what I want my website to do. And I want to sell product on it. And I want to do this. Create the, the code, the HTML for me to produce that. And it will produce that code, right? There was another guy just recently who said, you know, I've got $2,000. And I want to start up a business where I can do this from home, right? Minimize any kind of shipping a product. What do you suggest? So it created, you know, a business plan for this individual based on their $2,000. And it actually came out to be kind of a merchandising website where you're putting uh, designs created by AI on mugs and shirts. And the guy's making really good money doing it. So it created the whole business plan. So just depends on what you ask it. And in the technology side, it's easy if it has understanding of currently what you're working with. So in that sense, if it was a new Cisco router, you'd want to upload that manual into it and say, this is the content I want you to base the, your decisions on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. by the way, I would, I would wager that you should always, when you uh, get that business plan from a, a you know generative AI system, you should assume that the statement is uh, results may vary. It's clearly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I I run our professional center at Goodwill, so I, I've got folks that are in a job search and wondering what is the next step. They're wondering, or if they're employed, they're wondering is is AI going to take over my job? How is it going to impact my ability to earn a living? at some point. And, and so those fears are, are real. I mean, they're, they're, they're real. Uh, they may not be based on all the information because, you know, we hear things and let's face it, the media uh, enjoys keeping us on the edge of our seats. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Sells and, more toothpaste. Uh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> or shampoo, one of the two. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know much about that. So, you know, what's a guy to do? Um, what, what kind of jobs are do you see AI or, and GAI potentially um, doing away with? And any kind of timeline on this stuff? What, what do you see out there on the horizon? You know, th those are some big questions that yeah. I don't think anybody really has the answer to it. But some of the things that, that it can't do, creativity, right? 
It claims it can do pictures and all that kind of stuff and write poems and stuff. It still doesn't have the same creativity that we have. So if you're in a job that has creativity, I think you're you're safer than a job that is more rudimentary, right? Areas that are getting really bombarded right now are um, uh, law clerks are being replaced with AI because it's just going into a mass of data and what happened before, right? And coming mm -hmm. up with ways to present and argue the case. Those kind of things are... Um, people who look at uh, medical um, x-rays and things to determine what's going on. In a lot of cases, AI does better than the humans there. So there will be some transition of opportunities, of job opportunities, right? And it's not blue collar workers or white collar workers or anything like that. It's gonna be a range. So it's, it's going to impact. But the other piece of that is if you're smart, and you're at least understanding the potential, right? And you're harnessing the good portion of what this does, you can get ahead using it now, right? That may position you better to continue on. So definitely get to understand it, implement it in a regular way and be able to have conversations on it. I think it will help people in their employability going forward. But you know, who knows what it's really going to do impact-wise on the complete industry. But you can't live in fear, right? Yeah. We know this is important. We know it's a big buzzword. We know businesses are trying to figure this out. They're also now looking for people who understand the pros and cons of this opportunity. So you don't have people like that, oh, I can just throw our customer database in there and get a good end result on, on the analysis. You don't have people doing dumb things like that. Yeah. So take this in that approach of learning the, the good and the bad so that you can kind of move your business forward. And you were talking about resumes. Yeah. You can use it to help you clean up grammar. Grammarly, right, is an AI form. So if you're using Grammarly, you're already using AI. If you had no resume at all, you could say, you know, create a resume for somebody who does this, this, and this in this industry. And it would give you a sample, right? Do you just put your name on the top and send it in? Probably won't get you anywhere because it's going to look like everybody else who did the same thing, right? But it might give you some spark to, oh, that's a good bullet point around that where I had an achievement and I can add in my metrics to prove it, right? So again, I think it can mm -hmm. become a really good muse, but it's never a total solution. So, so um, Mike Brown is uh, and Jillian uh, Whitney are watching us on LinkedIn Live. Uh, right. Jillian reminded me that you use Chat GPT to help you write a Shakespearean sonnet. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then Mike Brown said that he read somewhere or heard somewhere that uh, Chat GPT is a great resource for. Uh, those who are having um, uh, marital relations problems, um, you know, marriage counselor, I think is the word to use. So, um, uh, only because they're on chat GTV <laughs> so much that they're not bothering their wife anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, if this is a, a personal question, maybe uh, you've, I'm sure, touched on it. So, just to help, just kind of get it straight in my mind. So, well, I'll say the difference between AI in general and GAI. And I'm thinking AI is something that can take the information and predict based on weather forecast, based on prior, you know, customer flow and can say we need to staff at a certain level for a particular day. So it, it's it's taking that in, but it's but it's not necessarily creating verbiage. It's it's not writing a sonnet. It's not writing a resume. It, is that where the generative where they're generating content versus th yeah, the thinking with AI alone creates an output general thinks on its own. So with generative, you have controls. With general, you have no controls. And general is what we know as AI. You know, that's in, when you know people yeah. start thinking about Terminator and things like that. That's general. Yeah. It, and it, it's general, but we just refer to it as AI. So if somebody says AI, that's really what people think of. And yeah. the GAI is the new. Uh, the the writer, if you will, the, the person the output, who, yeah, the output which stuff. at some point is the basis to go to general. 
Yeah. So generative is the step before general. Yeah, mind you, Randy, we have yeah. AI all the time. I have the the ALEXA device. I mm -hmm. have, uh, you don't you know, dare SIRI. speak the name. Nope. You know, I have, um, you know, we, we get in our car and, you know, we yeah. turn on our GPS. Um, Randy, that know. Palm Pilot you still use. Yeah. The, yeah, the Palm AI, Pilot. Right? It was giving yeah. you suggestions, right? <laughs> so AI has been around a while. It's just getting much more sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, Todd wants to know, hey, I, and I know why Todd wants to know. Todd's looking for a quick win here. He wants to know is, you know, can AI do a predictive environment? Can it predict the winner of the next horse race or the next uh, candidate being the right candidate to hire for a company? Um, Kevin, you want to play with that one? It, 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 a lot of it depends on the input that you're going to provide it, right? Because it can run statistics. Fantastic. But you've got to be able to tell it a little bit about what needs to happen, what should happen, you know, those kind of things. If HR has a risk based on uh, commute distance, right? If they know if you have to commute for an hour of work and an hour home, you're in a 95 percentile of looking for a new job within yeah. a year, that's not a good hire. So it all depends on what those parameters are that you bring into this mix so that it can then take that data and give you an output, right? Otherwise, it's you're just kind of leaving it up to the machine to kind of look at the statistics, and it may create good or bad information out of that. Because again, it doesn't know what the truth is. It just knows facts. And, and uh, Todd, you're going to have to get all the racing forms that you can from the racetracks, <laughs> and you're going to need to feed those into chat GPT and hope that your pony is in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, this, I mean, this conversation will continue to change and grow and, yeah. um, cause there's going to be another term, another, a player in the game. Hey, real quick, Kevin, uh, chat GPT 3.5 free versus premium, uh, uh, for, uh, your opinion, who, who would need to pay for it or should consider paying for it at this point? I would say always start with the free, right. To see if it helps you, um, what you're going to get with four, supposedly no wait time, which is not actually true because I've had to wait for it before. Um, it's much faster. It encompasses much more data depth, right? And it's in a new mode called intermodal. Hmm. And what intermodal means, let's say you read an article and there's this great picture, right? And then the text under the picture are kind of, using the picture to explain half of it, right? Chat GTP 3.5 would only see the text. Hmm. Doesn't see the picture, right? So they always say a picture's worth a thousand words. You just lost a thousand words in that process, right? So one of the new cool features, and not everybody has this yet for G GTP 4, is you could do something like take your iPhone, open your fridge, look at the content of your fridge, and it could give you recipes that you could make with whatever's in the fridge, right? I don't know what to cook today. You show it, it goes, I see that, I see that, I see that. If you combine them and put them on the stove at this, you now have something nice you can serve, right? So ketchup packages, right? <laughs> things like that. Uh, but, but wait a minute, Kevin. You're not going to need to take a picture because your new fridge will do that for it's you. Empty. Yeah, yeah, it's empty anyway. It's it's very lonely right now. It doesn't feel like I'm using it fully. But no, that that intermodality is is incredible. That now it can bring visual into this process as part of the data, right? Whereas before it couldn't. So that's a big step in GTP four. Um, they haven't quite rolled that out to everybody. It's only a small percentage of, that are getting the visual components, but all visual components are now put into the data. And I'm guessing that you're going to be able to take a picture of a cake that fell and looks like crap, and you'll be able to ask Chat GPT for why did my cake fall? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Or you could look at a, a, a cabinet and you know take a couple of pictures all the way around the cabinet and say, how do I build that? What materials would I need? What tools would I need? How long would it take me on average, right? Yeah. So it uh, can do things like that. Arc, does it factor in, does factor factor in my construction skills? I don't, I don't know whether. You might want to tell it that. <laughs> does it factor in my, uh, yeah, my ability? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I have honest. a hammer. I'm, I've been doing this for years. You, you'd want to give it a little information. That's where they always talk about these prompts, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, I always the people who are pushing prompts out there and selling prompts, I call them uh, prompt king and queen, right? Like the prom king and queen. They're just selling. Just converse with it as if you were having a conversation with somebody who knew nothing about what you were going to talk about. So you want to give them a little background, right? And so in that conversation, if you were asking somebody to give you expertise in woodworking, you'd want to tell them, I'm a novice. You know, I've never built a wooden boat before. So I'm going to, I'm a beginner here. How would you do it? You want to give them that information going in so that it can give the right output. I hope that makes sense. You would say, exactly. I have yeah. a hammer, but I don't know how to read a tape measure. Yeah. So I right, come back to LinkedIn for a minute, buddy. All right. <laughs> There's a new tool rolling out on LinkedIn. I think it's only for premium users, I believe, um, where um, LinkedIn is connected. To, I think is it chat GPT. Talk about that. A it little is bit. chat GTP. If you think about who owns LinkedIn, Microsoft, right? Who owns 49% of chat GTP? Microsoft. That, That's I mean, why Microsoft. you're seeing chat GTP uh, product appear here. And brilliantly, I have to say, LinkedIn said, you know what? We're not going to give this away for free. We're going to make this a reason to pay for premium. So there's now actually a reason for someone to have a premium account if they need these tools built into LinkedIn. Could you still use free chat GTP and then just copy and paste it? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it'll change the world in that sense, but the, you know, create a post with AI. If somebody is sitting there and they, they can't think of what to post, you know, they can give it anywhere from one word to 33 words, and it will basically write a post for you. And at that point, you can say, I like that, but I'd like it to be more friendly. And it should be able to adjust to make it more friendly, right? Wow. Again, I wouldn't use it as is, mm -hmm. you know, but you could use it to stimulate your thoughts. So if you have a focus, uh, you know, maybe you've got three words that always come up when you're writing something, you could plug those in and come up with posts for the next four or five months, yeah. right? I think it's one of the biggest issues on LinkedIn right now. People are having terrible reach now on posts and it's because People who couldn't figure out what to write now are not figuring it out at all. They're going to chat GTP and saying, write the next month's worth of my posts for me, right? This is what I need. This is what I want. They're creating it and they're just posting it. And a lot of them have no knowledge of what they're posting. You can pick them out pretty quick. You know, they're really dry. And I think that's what's flooding LinkedIn right now. Them building it in as a tool probably won't help that. So real content creators are going to get pushed down in the process. And I say that, <laughs> that, that this is what's happening. You know, it's absolutely blanding. There is no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate it. Um, oh. by, uh, by the way, I don't think I have it yet. I think it's still rolling out. Todd wants to know if, uh, oh, here, one question about uh, yep. Kevin. The, um, the AI tool at LinkedIn is incorporated. Is it 3.5 or 4.0? I think it's 4.0. Okay. But That'll make a they, big difference. I have not been able to find out, but that makes the most sense. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Todd, by the way, is a recruiter. Um, and so, um, and he's one of our longstanding friends. He shows up every, every week. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to know if, if these AI tools, are they going to be, are they being used to improve the search qualities? Or do you know the answer yet? Within LinkedIn, you mean? Yes, sir. Yes and no. You got to think about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a database that's based on six degrees of separation. And that's why LinkedIn cuts you off at three, right? So within six handshakes, you can meet anybody in the world. They cut you off at three so they can sell you the other three, mm -hmm. right? Or sell the other three to you. So they don't want to disrupt that component of their business model. So it's also... One of the reasons where you get relevancy, when you do a search, if I went in there and I searched for Teddy Burris, right? And your profile came up, first page, number one, and I wait five minutes and I search again, now you're on the second page, right? And I do the search again, now you're on the fifth page or the 50th page. 
That's relevancy. LinkedIn says, I already showed you Teddy. You already clicked on his profile. You don't want to see him again. So I'm going to move him down the list. They do that so we can't figure out SEO on LinkedIn by doing our own keywords. Yeah. Right. So there's some things within search that LinkedIn wants to control and will never kind of give us full search function. I get, I get. Yeah, right, I make money go. that way. Um, and by the way, you know Todd Porter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's look. him. It's that. That's him. It's the real Todd Porter. The real, <laughs> world famous Todd bomb. Porter. Porter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about something else that we haven't touched on yet. This is um, copyright. Let me tell you a story real quick, mm. and then, then I'll ask you to, to share with you about copyrights for you know this whole world of large language models and taking the output and, and using it. Uh, I was on a, uh, a, in a conversation a week or so ago with a lady, and she says, uh, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to create a business. I'm going to use chat GPT to come up with all these little cute little quotes and uh, brand new quotes, and I'm going to put it on content and sell it. And all of us in the conversation said, time out. Mm -hmm. You better make sure that you have uh, copyright for you to be able to do, you know, copyright permission, whatever the right term is, that you have permission to do that. Talk about copyright and and this whole world, Kevin, what you know of it right today. Well, and, and I'll tell you, it's evolving. Yeah. Last year, about the same time last year, if you did anything on Chat GTP, one of the things that you agreed to was that Chat GTP, OpenAI, owned the copyright. And you had to, if you were going to then push it out there, you had to say, this was created with ChatGTP, OpenAI, and my props, right? Copyright belongs to them. So you had to actually state that. So when things started hitting, like LinkedIn, when ChatGTP came out, that's what people were saying. This was created by ChatGTP. Very quickly, OpenAI found out the lawyers were lining up. Mm. Now when you do chat GTP, you take on all responsibility for copyright. So if somebody comes back and says, you plagiarized my material, which is very possible, right? Because that's what they've done. They've collected all the data and they're gonna spit it back out. It's your responsibility now. No longer is it the generative AI's responsibility. That has been a big shift in that sense. It's similar to Google. Google does not uh, own the copyright of the content that it shares with you. That's right. Uh, and you own. The, you have the responsibility uh, to follow the copyright laws as you reproduce and share. Yeah. 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 And hmm. you know, I run output from ChatGTP. I run it through Grammarly. Grammarly has a plagiarism checker, hmm. and it does pick up some things. So if somebody else is looking, maybe they're doing their thesis, right? With uh, chat GTP, all those universities, they're all running this through plagiarism checks. It's gonna pick it up. And now OpenAI has a tool that you can actually run and it will pick up and tell you whether the content was generated by any of these chat tools. So then they're doing that. They wanted to make the universities less angry at them, right? So mm -hmm. they've created that tool. It's okay. It's going to get better. Uh, but I, for myself, you can you can really tell who's using it and who's not because it's devoid of any kind of personality. It doesn't have any kind of reference points to real events, right, within somebody's life. And so nobody writes that way. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk about your two guiding principles. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to uh, discuss those with the group? Because I think they're 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 impactful for all of us. Well, uh, the one that I always think is that authentic intelligence, right? That's that's us, everybody here. That's always going to be more valuable than any kind of artificial intelligence, right? And without it. There is nothing for artificial intelligence to copy. Yeah. And that's really critical because at some point, if we're not <clears throat> producing creative content, artificial intelligence runs dry. 
Yeah. It is more dependent on us than we are on it. And I, I think people need to really understand that. Um, and most people don't think of it that way. So I, maybe that gives us the advantage in the long run, um, but I think it's important to know. So if I heard you right, one thing that I need to be careful of is if I start wearing a CPAP machine, I don't want it connected to the internet because it might start taking stuff out of my brain. <laughs> yeah. I, I use a CPAP I machine. But is, never, yours, but is yours internet based? Never Randy? bothered me in a bit. No, is, no. But, it's not but it is. It is. It's hooked up to a modem. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, hook, it's hooked up to a modem and it blasts out to the universe and then it gives me a printout later. So well, uh, it tells me. It, any, anything that is connected to the internet, there is a whole new <laughs> cyber crime piece that's building, right? And they're using generative AI to figure out how to crack these things, how to get in there, how to get information from yeah. you, how to listen devices. And, you know, I've got a whole kitchen worth. I got to be careful what I say in my kitchen now. Yeah. Blackmail. I mean, it, it's, somebody it's, could be listening, right? Yeah. They could uh, copy so, your voice too. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to be said about it and uh, mm. a lot of kind of security issues, but people are using now these tools to create cyber crimes and uh, Interpol actually put out a great report on how this is being, how it's being done and how they're using now these tools to create better phishing opportunities, right? Those little emails and the communication back and forth yeah. and, yeah. you know, how to send that. So, you know, your account has been violated at the bank, you need to sign in, how to do it in a way that actually convinces them that that's a real person on the other end even through this intermodal stuff where now voice comes into effect, it's not all text. Yeah. They're creating new crime in that area. So good to be aware. Kevin, Kevin, we could go on for freaking hours, man. This is really <laughs> pretty cool. A lot mm -hmm. of good stuff. And I uh, really appreciate you showing up. And um, uh, I, I shared your LinkedIn profile URL for people to follow you there and your website. Uh, follow Kevin. Kevin is um, he is nonstop at paying attention to what's going on in, in this world and what's going on in the world of LinkedIn. So, buddy, really, really appreciate you. Thanks, showing up. Thank you. If there's, if there's, Thank you. If there's one quick thing that you had that we need to make sure we never forget, what is that that you want to share with us? Well, I have one question. How did Randy become the good in the good, the bad, and the ugly? Huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know he's that, saying he never gets a bonus, right? There's your bonus. Hey, that looked like the outlaw Josie Wells. That they got the the cape kind of thrown over there. So that I appreciate that. That's that my your bonus. Promotion, right? So, <laughs> so, Carlos, thanks for being here. Debbie, thanks yeah. for being on here. Kevin, again, buddy, really appreciate you. And uh, uh, we, you and I will be talking again soon. Um, hey, Randy, you want to yep. uh, talk about who our speaker is next week? Yeah, we've got two guests coming on next week. Uh, Kevin, thanks for coming on today. Next, you know, it, unless you've lived under a rock, uh, you know that there are some turbulent uh, economic times with banks closing and all kinds of interest rates and talk of recession, all kinds of stuff going on. So we're going to have a, a, a CEO of a bank on to talk from a, a lending standpoint when the banking world we're also going to have uh well and his name is david barksdale and we'll also have lloyd barnhart on and and uh, lloyd's actually uh, attending our our show today yeah, so he's getting a, a, yeah i he, hope he shows up next week i hope so i haven't scared him off but he's he deals with uh personal investment so talking about from a from an investment standpoint what does the tea leaves look like from that standpoint perspective yeah. so we'll try to get it all sorted out next week that'll be on wednesday the 24th teddy i just hope those guys accept that i believe i'm right when i pick the right mattress to put my money under hey you're on lunch conversation work. Andy and teddy our special guest today was a good friend kevin d turner a great conversation well uh, our show is sponsored in part by blackwell captive solutions ownership peace of mind price stability Reach out to blackwellcaptive.com if you are self-insured for your health insurance for your employees. Randy, good seeing you. Kevin, yep, you the man, good seeing you. And a thank you to all of our folks in the audience. We appreciate all of you. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you.